but it's really it's really bigger than just uh, from an athletic standpoint. This is a worldwide epidemic. Uh, we have more opportunities to play basketball, but the downside of some of the circumstances that could happen as a result of us not being cautious, I believe probably could could be something that we don't want to have to deal with. So I'm, I'm pleased that the uh, leaders have thought things through with the information that they have, and they have decided that we, that it's best for the betterment of our student athletes and administration and for the game of basketball, for us to proceed with caution and uh, not allow ourselves caught up with maybe the fact that this is something that we have to deal with, that we don't have all the information and it's fluid and we don't know what the outcome will be. As a coach, you're always trying to <clears throat> prepare yourself for the unexpected, but this is truly one of those circumstances that we're preparing ourselves for what we don't really know what to expect the outcome will be. You have any questions? Please raise your hand. Let us get the handheld mics to you. First one right here in the aisle. Yeah. Leonard, um, your, your players were out there, then they went in the locker, and then they came back and they went. And can you just walk us through what the situation was and how you learned what was finally going to happen? Well, th these conversations, I'm sure, have been going on with our commissioner, uh, with the powers to be where he gets this information from, the NCAA, the other conferences. So in, in the background, I'm sure that there's a lot of communication that's going on almost hourly, minutely, as, as, as we're approaching the start of the game. As a staff, we had talked about it earlier, anticipating that it was a pretty good chance that this could happen, that the games would be canceled because of the nature of uh, what we're dealing with. So we had, we had gone in to talk to our players as, as preparing for the game, um, uh, our, our normal routine of going over the scout report to last minute details, um, talking to the players about uh, the game plan. And then our athletic director came in and motioned for me to come and visit with him over in the coach's room. And uh, I was prepared mentally for what I thought was getting ready to happen. And the commissioner came in and we had a discussion. And, uh, I think the Big Ten and the SEC had counseled their games and whatever the information that he had gathered he thought was in the best interest for us to follow suit, and uh, which was probably the most logical thing, decision to make. And as we talked about the details and how we would, uh, you know, uh, proceed from this point, uh, that we bring the players out on the floor, um, give us the trophy and, and then acknowledge the situation to our fans and the media who was there. At that time, I went back over and, uh, when our players came off the court. Uh, I brought them in a little earlier so that we could discuss wh what the circumstances were surrounding the situation. And they were disappointed when I told them that the, the, it, it had been canceled. But I, I, I challenged them to be mature and understand the challenges of what's going on in the world and that they had to be patient with uh, uh, the process. And um, I felt very confident that we were making the right decisions. And I wanted to assure them that whatever medical attention that was needed, whatever uh, we could do to make sure that <clears throat> we made them secure and their parents secure, that we were doing the very best that we could to uh, make sure that everything that we did was in their best interest and in their, in their safety and that we would do that. And uh, I wanted to assure them that uh, uh, we had to handle this in a matured way and, and move on. And that's kind of what the process, how the process played itself out. <clears throat> as, you, as you were approaching today, did you speak on any hesitation about playing with the circumstances or did you leave it to the powers that be and let them handle it? No, the no, I... I felt that it was in my best interest not to be part of the, uh, the confusion that they were going through enough, and I trust that they were gathering all the accurate information that I would not have access to. So I, I just wanted to make sure that 
that we had the, enough information to explain to our players because you have your players, you have their parents, and, and everybody's involved. And I just want to make sure that we assured everybody that, that we were doing the, the right thing by, the, by their children, the, the, young, the, the, young, the young men that we are responsible for. Second row in front of us. Yeah, Coach, you, you mentioned that you kind of came in today knowing that this was a very real possibility and understanding that things change minute to minute, hour to hour. Right now, do you anticipate there being an NCAA tournament? <laughs> it, would, it would be uh, out of order for me to start voicing the more in my opinion and, I don't, and trying to look into uh, making comments about decisions that will be made with a lot more information than I have right now. I'd be disrespectful to the people who are making those decisions. Uh, we're going to be prepared for whatever decisions that are made and, and in support of, of um, the process. Um, and um, that's the best thing for us to do. I mean, it, it's, I'm sure there are options all over the board. You could play it without having fans. You could delay it to maybe we get a handle on the, the epidemic and play it at a later time. I have absolutely no idea uh, about how uh, to go about this. I'm just going to trust that we have tremendous leadership in, in the ACC with, with John Swafford. And I truly believe that whatever decisions are made, along with the other commissioners and the athletic directors and presidents of the other, uh, other schools around the country, that they will make the right decision. To our left. Uh, as of 11 o'clock, the commissioner sat on that stage and said the, the tournament was a go. Do you have any sense for what the tipping point was? Was Donovan Mitchell's diagnosis a factor in this? Now, once again, for me to start commenting on something that I don't know anything about would be disrespectful to the people who are making those decisions. And, and there's, it's very, it's challenging right now to allow your emotions and your feelings to get involved without having all the facts. And when you're responsible for the well-being of, of individuals, if you're going to err, you're going to err on the side of precaution. And uh, I'm sure that they made those decisions based on that. And what the timing was, I think is irrelevant. I just think that uh, it's kind of a moving target all over the place. And, um, uh, I'm sure it was day by week by week, <laughs> day by day, hour by hour, uh, gathering information, and they come to the conclusion that I'm in tremendously support. I'm, I'm in support of. Uh, you have you know years of experience and, and maturity and wisdom to deal with all this. Oh, you're we, trying to say we, I'm old? We in? all do. We all do in this room. <laughs> uh, but the players, you know, this is they've been training for these moments, um, you know, their whole lives and. Uh, did they ask questions? What, how, how have they been through this process? We have not had any real detailed discussions because I didn't want to enter uh, that into their mindset as we prepared for the game. And I've, um, our guys, uh, uh, I think, trust us and in, in the information that we give them. Uh, I just wanted to assure them that the decisions that w have been made w would be in their best interest and that whatever the best approach was, I want them to have confidence that we would adhere to that. If there's testing, if there's anything that, that, that is in their best interest to help us through this, these circumstances, I want them to understand that that's how we operate and that's what's going to happen. I wanted to ease, ease their mind, but we had to handle this in a matured way and not emotional. You know, that we had to understand that this was something that was going on that, that uh, doesn't come on long. Uh, I don't even know if we've ever had a situation like this. So this is unusual. This is something that's different, and we got to handle it in a matured way. Middle of the room. Coach, other than just what, is, what we do from here and the longer-term ramifications, how do you process that scene? What did you make of being out there, and how are you going to remember that moment, I guess? I, I'm extremely proud of our players because uh, we, we're in a conference with the best basketball teams, coaches, and programs ever assembled in the history of college basketball. Most of the schools got 75, 80 years of successful success, success ahead of us. 
Florida State started out in the, I think they were, we've been independent. We was in the Dixie Conference, we was in the Metro Conference. They were independent. Why everyone else was in the SEC, the ACC, the Big Ten, having success in basketball, having, you know, establishing their legacy. So we we kind of new guys on the block. Uh, we we have the and we got invited to the party. <laughs> so we trying to carve our own niche out. So th that was significant for us today to be the regular season champions. Our guys have worked hard for that. And that's allowing us to carve out this little niche for ourselves that we we are in we can, we belong to an establishment of some of the best of the best Hall of Fame coaches, Final Fours, NCAA tournaments. I mean, there's a whole a whole list of them. So th this moment is important. Uh, I'm not real sure our players understand how important it is, but they enjoy the moment for what it is today. I'm looking at what has happened in the past and look where we're going toward the future. So it was important for us to have this set accompl this accomplishment, and I'm proud of them uh, because we we in order for us to be successful, we have to be a little different. We play more players than most people. We play, we share more minutes. We sh we share playing time. And that's part of who we are. Our guys have developed a theme that we're 18 strong. We win games by committee, and in this day and time of every quick fix. And uh, everything want to happen fast, and the one and does, and the two and out. Sometimes that's a little challenging for for guys to accept. But our guys have bought in and they're accepting it, and and that was their reward, being recognized and getting that trophy meant something to them. And I'm sure they'll remember this moment for the rest of their lives. Leonard, outside of the basketball and the decision making, was there a point this week where maybe you just started getting personally nervous about? how this could affect your family, how this might affect the, the guy's family as this virus kind of continued to spread and dominate the news cycle? Well, obviously, you know, I'm aware of taking precautions um, for your family. and But the players, are, <laughs> they are our family. And so as I think about myself personally, I'm also thinking about what's best for our players. That's on our mind on a regular basis every day. And uh, most of them say I'm, they, they say I'm germaphobic. Uh, I use so much sans, hand sanitizer, I had to go to the dermatologist to see why my hands were cracking up so much. <laughs> you know, I'm just, that's just kind of my nature. We have hand sanitizer almost at every stop uh, in the locker room, before games, after games. So our guys understand, we talk about hygiene. We had our team doctors go over information with them uh, in the last week about how to proceed with caution um, from a health standpoint. Uh, we try to get them to eat right and stay, uh, um, drink a lot of water and do all the things that we know that can keep them healthy. But um, we really don't know how to deal with this. This is, we don't have a cure for it. Um, it's challenging. And so we do what we think is best and we proceed with caution. So yes, I. I feel there a lot of responsibility. Every time I hear one of them cough, you know, in my mind, I'm saying, wow, you know. But that's part of being a parent in a parent situation. Have you or any of your players been tested for coronavirus? I don't even know where the tests are. Do you? You know where the tests are? You know, so I think what I'm saying, what all I understand is that there are we don't have enough tests available now, but we're going to start looking into that. You know, I think that's the wise thing for us to do uh, is to um, make sure we don't have anyone if, uh, affected by anything. But right now, uh, we're gathering information like everyone else, uh, and it becomes real serious. Uh, I wish I could tell you that I could go out there and pick up about 100 tests, and, and but, but I don't know how to do that now. But we have already started making calls trying to figure it out. Leonard, I know this is all happening so fast, and maybe you'll get more clarity soon on the NCAA tournament, but, but if you don't have a decision or, or know what's going to happen, will you guys just go back home and start practicing and preparing for games you may not? Well, have? what we're going to do, we're going to try to gather all the information. I would love to keep all our players together uh, for a safety standpoint. You know, I'm, 
I, I'm not real sure that I want them doing a lot of traveling and being in large crowds. That's just off the top of my head. Uh, but but we're going to sit down, we're going to discuss with our athletic director and, and our medical staff, and we're going to try to make sure that we make decisions based on all the inf information that we can gather. Um, but um, my initial thought was that we'd get back and prepare ourselves as much as possible, anticipating that there will be an NCAA tournament until we are, we are notified otherwise. Anyone else? Okay, thank you.